sorry ass out on the street. <laughs> Say what you got. You used to think you own the street. We'll pack your bags and your ass is dead meat. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Lowdown Show Remix right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, your Canadian wrestling podcast that talks about NXT and WWE and No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. You can follow the podcast right here on Twitter, No Holds Barred WP. You can also follow myself at Real Kyle Masters. You can also follow my co-host at Corporate Cappy on Twitter as well. If you want to follow us on Instagram at No Holds Barred WP, where you can find us on there if you're into that sort of Instagram thing. Go check us out on there and give us a follow if you will. If you want to listen to us on the go, we are available to listen to on Spreaker, iTunes, and Stitcher Radio. Spreaker is a glorious podcast app that's available for all Android and Apple devices. Um, If you want to watch any YouTube content like that, youtube.com slash NHBWR is where you can find that. You can find some 2K content, some unboxings, and video versions of this podcast. Everything is located on there. So hit that subscribe button and that bell icon for all upload updates. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and every week on the Lowdown Show, I'm continuing to be joined by my co-host. He is the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. I God, I hate Skype. <laughs> I, I just seen that as I'm introducing you into the into the show here. That was like it perfect just timing. It, it literally was perfect timing. It just reconnected as I said your name. <laughs> Could have went on uh, app, but <laughs> that would have yeah. in my headset here. I'm listening. I'm going, oh, it's awfully quiet on Cappy's end. Usually, I can hear something, but then I see you calling in, literally like, right on the dot. It, it connected <laughs> back. So. Perfect. Uh, we got glorious. I'm back. <laughs> He's back. Better than ever. <laughs> but we got glorious Greg in the chat. What's going on, glorious Greg? We also got Michael Chow, the podcast. Michael Chow TV guys, go check him out. If you like our wrestling podcast, you will like his wrestling podcast and his take on Raw and SmackDown every week. Go check him out and follow him on Spreaker as well. He says the Velveteen MCTV Dream is here, and we also got the, what, the wait, graduated wait. Cuba Girl One Two Five. So the congratulations, <laughs> congratulations the to the Cuba Girl TV Dream, the Velveteen MCTV Dream. He put. I can't even, like, comprehend that right now. <laughs> Anyways, yes, Little Miss Tricks graduated on Rusev Day. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, wow, you graduated on Rusev Day. What do you know? Good yeah. for, I was you, waiting for you, I was waiting for her to say something about Velveteen Dream. Like, it was just... Oh, you know it's it coming different. in the chat. You know. Yep. Um, there it is. Yeah. Anyways, guys, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Lowdown Show. If you don't know what the Lowdown Show is, this is where we review NXT, the A Show, every single week right here on Spreaker Live. It's where you can download this glorious app and you can chat with us live with all these glorious people in the chat right now. You can chat with us. You can listen to all previous episodes of the podcast. And it's where we go live every single week right here on Spreaker. And if you want... You can watch the video version of the podcast. It'll be on YouTube after. You can see my glorious face if you want to. And then that's where we have unboxings, like I said before, 2K content. Everything's on there. So thank you for joining us right here on Spreaker Live where we review NXT every single week. We used to do Raw and SmackDown. But... Well, we did one this week. We did one this week because of the 25th anniversary of Raw. So that is live up on the channel. So you can go check that out. And our take on the 25th anniversary show of Raw, which was a very, very disappointing show in our t- in our eyes. There's a lot of people out there that yeah. loved it, but you know, that's, you know that's their opinion. I guess people have their opinions. The Whether eight it's... woman extravaganza. Yeah, the eight woman extravaganza. I'm glad we got to experience that and get to talk about that. Uh, but uh, this will review NXT. NXT was the go home show for NXT Takeover Philadelphia this week, and uh, look out for our Takeover predictions. Uh, coming out later on this week, so uh, that will be probably posted on Friday, uh, the day before TakeOver, so check that out when it's out. Um, but interesting go-home show this week, not the typical uh, go-home show that we usually get at NXT. You usually get you pumped up for NXT TakeOver, and they really kind of surrounded it around two matches, and we got a bunch of other showcase kind of things uh, throughout the episode of NXT tonight. Um which is a little unusual from NXT, you know. They're not always perfect, but again, they they, they did. I think it did its job tonight to get you mainly hyped for the two main things around uh, Takeover Philly this week. I think they could have done a little bit more between Adam Cole and uh, Velvet or Velveteen, uh, Alistair Black, but we we only got a promo package from them. I mean, so. as NXT usually does that for go home shows, it's basically just you know promos. Mm-hmm. 
I just wish they kind of would have stepped up a little bit. You know what? Take advantage of the lackluster Raw and SmackDown this week. Like, SmackDown last night was a snooze fest. My God. I'm so glad we don't <laughs> review these shows, man, because I don't – I I wouldn't – I. it's not like I would rant a whole lot about SmackDown. I would just get bored because I wouldn't have anything to rant about because it was just so boring. It was so bland. It was just – Ugh. SmackDown was just like complete dry garbage. Stale as you know croutons. Literally. Um, yeah, well, Michael I mean, Schell, besides I besides uh, Jinder Mahal coming out, I mean that guy just oozes charisma. Oh yeah, more like a charisma vacuum in this case. But anyway. If anybody cares, the other uh, Singh brother, I forget which one it is. He had ACL in uh, surgery, so. That was where he was. Poor him. Poor, poor, whatever Singh brother he was. I don't remember his, their names because they're really irrelevant in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, poor that Singh brother. We'll just say that. Poor that Singh brother. Raw 25 was absolute shit. Thank goodness it will be another 25 years before we have to celebrate that garbage again. <laughs> And we'll be in our 50s when that happens. I don't know if I'm going to be reviewing WWE by then. We'll see where I'm at in that case. But, God, I hope they do a better job 25 years down the line. But we don't you know when the next anniversary show is going to be. Are they going to do, Rus- are they going to do Raw 30? Are they going to do Raw 40, Raw 45? Like, what's going to need- – 50 makes more sense. But, you know, they did the Raw 15th anniversary show. Are they going to do it, like, every, like, 10 years? Is that what's going to go down? Like, Raw 35? I can see him kind of doing something like that. No, probably 2000 will be the next one. Yeah, Raw 2000. Oh, yeah, they're pro- we're probably going to get a Raw 2000 in between now and 50. We should. Um, we got SmackDown 1000 this year. I think that's going to be good. I think. It's not really a show Vince McMahon gives us two shits about, so who knows how much effort they're going to put into that. Yeah, the only thing good, uh, Cuba Girl is right. The only thing good about SmackDown was the little tension we got between Shane and Daniel Bryan, which we do really don't know where it's going. A lot of people are thinking it's a match between Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon. Well, who knows? It could be even a match between Daniel and someone else, or it could be leading to. It could always be leading to Daniel Bryan's firing, and then maybe that's his cue to leave the company. Maybe that's going to be his, you know, basically WWE's push out the door, saying, "Oh, we know you want to go and do all this stuff in the Indies because we're never going to let you wrestle." So here you go. We're going to write a storyline for you to get out of the uh, out of the company. Yeah, kind of like Enzo Amore. <laughs> oh, my Lord. What a body bag that was. What a joke he is. And for the people out there that are um, – and I did promise Cuba Girl the celebration song this week, but I forgot to download it. I'm sorry, Cuba Girl. But uh, maybe I'll do it on a takeover just for you, But uh, on takeover predictions. But anyways – the people out there are like trying to defend Enzo Amore and saying, "Oh, it's uh, no one's uh, guilty until proven innocent." And you guys do realize that Derby's main thing with Enzo wasn't this. Like they're they're really like even if if Enzo is proven not guilty, they're still not going to bring him back. They're literally waiting. Derby is waiting for Enzo to slip up once because mm-hmm. of what he he is in the company. Okay, for one, he's banned from the locker room. So that should tell you a huge thing. Like he's not he's not allowed into the the, the locker room with all the other wrestlers. The guy's he's burned bridges with everybody. Exactly, he's a complete scumbag. Um, he's cheated on it on, on a, a wrestler that he was dating in the company, um, aka like if these rape allegations are true. So he was with Liv Morgan at the time. So here's another case of him cheating on Liv Morgan. Um, he's just like a bad person. Like he doesn't give a crap. So why should there be give a crap about him? So they're just waiting just... for the first slip up, and then they see that and they're like, fuck it. You're out the door, and if even if you're proven not guilty, we still don't want you back. They I don't, don't want blame his them. baggage. They don't want his baggage. Exactly. And plus, they were just they were they were over him like a hawk, waiting for one thing, and then pounce on him. Okay, you're done. So, and I don't I don't blame WWE. I'm not going to be one of these people that are going to sit here and defend Enzo Amore, and everyone deserves a second chance. Enzo Amore's had so many chances, so it's good it's good riddance in my eyes. So agreed. So no more uh, muscles marinara, or maybe he'll be in the impact zone. Who knows? The two five light division is going to flourish from this because so, he was literally useless in the division. He brought comedy, so, yes, but he was literally bad for the division. For the talent that they have in that division right now, he was shit. So does that mean Neville might come back now? Now that he's gone, <laughs> maybe. Like I don't know how we would go. And about I just realized. But... I told you today. I just realized that that whole Naya and Enzo thing is now over. 
Done. Don't have to worry about it ever again. And I hope they don't do it with Drew Gulak because we saw the picture that surfaced on uh, Twitter now of Drew Gulak and uh, Nia Jax. I really hope that doesn't become a thing. But Jesus Christ, just get that garbage off my television. Thank God. But uh, that's enough enough of Enzo Amore, enough of the main roster because it's complete ass. So we'll talk about the actual A brand, as you can see in the, if you're watching the the video version of this or if you're seeing it uh, during the, uh, or if you're listening to it uh, on the go. We are doing the NXT review for tonight, the uh, January 24th edition of NXT, the go-home show for TakeOver Philly. Um, It was live from Atlanta again, so it looks like they did three or four weeks of Atlanta tapings. uh, And basically, this is the conclusion of it because the next week's taping is going to be the one at TakeOver Philly. Um, So I think Atlanta did a pretty good job. I think I like the crowd. They were really, really invested. Even at the end of this taping, they looked like they were still hot. So... They were really into that Gargano Velveteen Dream match. Yeah, so. very, very into that match. Um, we opened the show up, and speaking of, we've opened the show up with a Velveteen Dream vignette. Um, he was in like a he he had like an NXT background. And he snapped his fingers, and it went all dark, and then this like purple smoke was like filling the room, kind of like Velveteen Dream's like area, like you know, like Undertaker, all his vignettes and stuff. He was always like in a graveyard or something like that. This is like Velveteen Dream's like space like he is very like uh prince-esque kind of thing like he's in a dark room with purple smoke he's talking about his match with gargano tonight to see who goes on to, to face the and almost that take over philly and becoming nxt champion i thought this was very very well done and a really good start to the show i think it really got you invest into that main event and with velveteen dream when his one of his looks like it's not the first the end of these vignettes we're gonna get so i'm liking it sure um <laughs> Uh, we got No Way Jose returning to open the show after oh, that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My boy No Way Jose. Been waiting fuck for this guy. The been wondering where the fuck he is. <laughs> the milk where? carton can be put away. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. It was the theme of tonight. Freaking showcase matches. Yeah. So, already we have... A, and it, this was a showcase match. Like, I guess a returning showcase match to get people back invested into No Way Jose. And maybe we're getting a push out of him. But against someone who I didn't think that would be the guy to take the showcase loss. Um, he f- returns after, like, almost a month-long hiatus. And we see Cesar Bononi. Uh, yeah. This guy's a big dude. Right. Yeah, he's a big dude. He's got the look, man. He's got the look. He's got the athleticism. I think we just got to wait to see what he's like on the mic. So maybe some big things around uh, Cesar Bononi. I know they are mentioning during the commentary that uh, he could be one of the 2018 rising stars. So maybe they, that's a plug they put in maybe to keep an eye on Cesar Bononi. Who knows what happens in the future. So um, we'll have to keep an eye on that guy. Same but with, yeah, uh, it's, it's, he didn't really get any mic time. So we don't really know what he can mm-hmm. do as far as that. But it's probably just getting him some, like you said, get him TV time. Get him a few matches, and then then they'll start, you know, using him properly, probably, yeah. or seeing what he has. Uh, as for No Way Jose, still over. Crowd was very, very behind him, <laughs> singing his theme, theme song, song with him. <laughs> it's great. I mean, it, it was good match. It was a really quick match. It was good. It was very anticlimactic finisher. I'm not sure what I think of No Way Jose's finisher. Um, that kind of like pops you up and then kind of gives you like a elbow. Something that's been done before. I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. Um, but Noe Jose with the win over in a quick match. So, yep, showcase central tonight. <laughs> um, after this is where we got into the Alistair Black and Adam Cole promo, like I was talking about. Again, I wish they would done something else rather than this promo because it's, like, it's an extreme rules match. It's between two like of NXT's top stars. So all we did was got a promo. They're showcasing how their feud started. Um, I thought it was really well done. Again, the promo guys behind the NXT promos are really, really good at what they do. And this really showcased uh, how this feud started and how they became so heated on each other. So I, I thought it did a good job of making Undisputed Era look very good as well. Um, they were really uh, showcasing them near the end of this promo and making them look more dominant than Aleister Black. I think that's a good idea going into that match with Aleister Black at NXT uh, TakeOver Philly in that Extreme Rules match. So I thought this was well done. Again, though, I wish they would have done something more physical and more face-to-face in a go-home show for an Extreme Rules match. So, Yeah, I would have liked to have seen you know, a stare down or something like that, but they, we didn't get anything from those guys. Mm-hmm. But I guess they were playing off the fact that they already had seen it the last taping, or I guess the same night, 
yeah. when Regal came out and announced the Extreme Rules match, so I don't think they could come out again right after that. So. Yeah, I mean, we did have Gargano come out and do that whole speech last week, and he came out now and has a match, so that's it's just something. Maybe even a backstage face-to-face, something that they could have been pre-recorded weeks before, like something just for the go-home show. To yeah. Me, like, the promo's good, just it's not... For that kind of match, for an ex- for labeling it as an extreme rules match, it could have done a little bit more. Yeah, like the promo is okay, like before a match, but to me, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I would have wanted a little bit more for because it is a big match, so you want something a little bit more significant than that. Mm-hmm. Um, next we had uh, Bianca Belair having a match. Oh man! And if you guys oh. don't know who Bianca Belair is, I suggest you go watch and, and pay attention because this girl looks like she's going to have a good future with NXT. Um, her in that long ass braid that literally goes down to her ankle, man. Like that's a long, long, long braid. And uh, it's and thick too, a man. weapon. <laughs> oh, as we saw in this match and she faced, uh, I guess you can call her a local jobber, but her name was Latoya Alsa, and I guess she is a, uh, I have it written down here, a 10-year veteran who has wrestled in Japan. I mean, some guy in the crowd noticed her. Some, some guy was, like, chanting his, her name, and she, like, pointed him out. I'm like, oh, okay, so this guy obviously knows who this local jobber that we thought was. So, like, she's a 10-year veteran. Never heard of her before. Um, <laughs> basically, a showcase match. So, as we said before, this was a showcase for Bianca Belair. I think it's good to have, and it just came at a bad time. Um, that shot with that long braid we're going to get to that you could probably hear from space. <laughs> that was fucking loud. <laughs> like, I yeah. mean, like, that sounded like if you took a frying pan and smacked the shit out of someone's chest. Probably feel the same way. I think that would be harder than a frying pan. That thing was... The, what what the hell ever her name was she came off the middle rope <laughs> Latoya and just right, Osta. Yeah, Latoya she got it right in the friggin gut Bianca's like a better version of Naomi yeah mm, to me she's got this like you said she's got the Sasha Banks attitude from NXT mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and she's kind of got like a jazz type persona you know what I mean like uh okay I see I see what you mean here yeah like I, I, like I, her I kind of that. like her mean streak kind of attitude. Mm-hmm. I kind of get that jazz feel from her, but mm-hmm. she's definitely got potential. I'm pretty sure she's only like 23 years old, so Which I think huge. there's big potential in Bianca Belair, especially she's already got some sort of gimmick with her whole hair thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so Bianca ends the match with a backwards power bomb. That's her finisher. Um, definitely a interesting finisher for a woman. Something you don't really see a lot. Uh, I think a lot of women have interesting finishers out there, and this, is, this actually is a good thing. So we have something different out of Bianca Belair with that win, and definitely that long braid of hers is definitely a key part of her winning matches. That's for sure. Mrs. Montez Ford is definitely turning some eyes. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, Mrs. Montez Ford. Yep. Um, so what we got next was actually pretty pretty intense. Um, I w- wasn't sure what to make of it. I don't know how they were going to do it because it was announced earlier that uh, Shayna Baszler and Ember Moon were going to have a sit-down interview face-to-face, like literally in front of each other with uh, Percy Watson because, you know, he's a great interviewer. Um, actually, I didn't really mind him in this one. He really didn't do anything that cringe. He did what he needed to nope. do. Um, but it was a face-to-face interview. They had this, like, very, very intense music playing, which was really good. I mean, these guys, the people that are doing these in NXT are so good, man. I hope one day these these people eventually move to the main roster and put the work that they do in these promos and interviews in NXT on the main roster because I think that's what's missing on the main roster that get people invested in stuff and to get people invested in a three-hour show, which is so fucking long on Raw, or even a, a two-hour <laughs> SmackDown. It just seems so bland and boring. You need something like this, right? <laughs> um, so they do a really especially good if, job especially if you're at the Manhattan Center this week oh, God, oh. I, f- I still feel bad for those people man I really really feel bad for you people out there um, Ember Moon calling out Baszler after what she's done so far uh, with uh, her beating on people and, and being just a freaking savage uh, Baszler says that it's not about anyone uh, anyone on the roster and you have to stir up the water to catch the big fish as she puts it. 
Uh, Ember says that she she's the big fish for a reason, and she has a responsibility to re- represent the division, and it won't ever happen to Shayna her, for her acting like that. Uh, Shayna says that she doesn't care what anyone thinks and has worked just as hard to get where she's at and to earn that title shot. Shayna also says that when you see me walking away with your title, it's going to be me walking away with your dreams. And then Shayna says she doesn't care about the NXT universe. They're going to have to get used to it. So this was actually a really, really well done interview. Uh, I love Ember Moon in this in this interview. We're seeing a lot more good promo work out of her, a lot more mic skills, which is good. We needed something out of that, with your, especially with your NXT Women's Champion. You need someone that actually can represent that belt, and I think Ember Moon is actually doing a good, better job now than she used to be on the mic. So, and I just like the way that they presented this promo, like the the way that the the cameras were set up. Like mm-hmm. you said, the the music they chose was good. Um, and like just the way that they were talking, like it actually seemed like a legit, you know, back, back and forth conversation, not just like some like, you know, scripted garbage that, you know, they came up with in 10 minutes on the main roster. And I think Ember Moon's eye, like her, I know it's part of her gimmick and she's always done, but her eye, uh, her eye thingies this week really made her look more intense in this promo and the way she was staring right at, like she was staring right into Baser's soul. And yeah. you, you got to make it look credible for this match because literally looking on the outside, if you don't see a promo like this, you're just looking at it going, okay, Baszler's going to whoop Ember Moon's ass. Like there's no contest. Yeah. But I think this added more to it and it's adding a lot more to like, they're, okay, there's going to be some tests. Baszler's not going to walk all over Ember Moon. It's going to be a good test. So uh, Ember needed to have some kind of mean streak coming in here. Mm-hmm. Like she had to, she had to do something like that. And I think this was a great, like this is the way a promo should be, you know, like, it actually looked intense, and it actually looked like they both, you know, mm-hmm. wanted to fight each other, and not just some, you know, crappy promo where half the time they're barely looking at the other person. I think this was a really good job. Yeah, better than any Brock Lesnar staring into the camera promo, <laughs> this, looking for looking for Goldberg while Paul Heyman's talking in the background. Oh, uh, that was memorable. <laughs> um, Michael Chow, it's interesting you say that he, he says Shayna should have won the Mae Young Classic. Uh, Kara really hasn't done much. It's because this was actually supposed to be Ember Moon and Kari Zane. But because Kari Zane got injured, they switched it to Shayna Baszler. So um, don't count Kari Zane out. I think when she's uh, fully healed from her injuries that we're going to get a lot more out of Kari Zane. So um, stay tuned for Kari Zane. Don't count her out just yet. Um, it, it's, it does. It kind of it kind of seems like now the way they're building up Baszler, maybe she should have won the Mayon Classic. It's, mm-hmm. like, it's, it's like she's build, getting built up as this really like badass and no one's going to be able to defeat. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, after this interview, we had the part two of the TM61 promo video, which uh, part one last week was really, really well done. Uh, we both loved it. I mean, it gets you more invested in TM61 for uh, a good reason because beforehand, we never knew anything about TM61. And if you you people out there, like and a lot of people out there, they had no idea what the hell these guys were. They didn't do any intro to them they didn't talk about them when they first debuted nxt like no one knew who the hell these guys were but i love these two promo videos to, to showcase who they are and what they've come from uh this was really well done they started off from the dusty road classic uh showing the injury to shane thorne um basically he fought through that injury and this is a lot of stuff that i didn't even know about these guys i guess he fought through that injury uh, through the TakeOver Toronto match, which me and myself and Cappy were actually there, witnessed that match. And he even pulled off that giant spot off the scaffolding or whatever that thing is, a crane, with that injury. So he was, he, I guess he, they're showcasing how strong they are and how much they're fighting through injury just to, to show the world who TM61 is. And it took until the, a couple of weeks after that with a match with Revival to finally hit the nail in the coffin about that injury and finally came to... That okay, we're gonna have to do something about it. So Shane Thorne took a spot in a match that really uh, hurt him and had to go to the doctors about it. And then he found out he's gonna be out six to seven months from that point f- with this injury. And that's where they were all this time. Um, they really showed how hard how hard they actually worked to get to where they are throughout their entire NXT career and their life beforehand and what they went through getting endorsed by Harley Race and Harley Racing. These guys are the next tag team, which is a huge endorsement by a guy like Harley Race. So I thought this was very well done, these two-part videos, and then the return of TM61 will be next week during that taping that is taped at TakeOver Philly, which is a great idea because the crowd is going to be really hot for that. So... 
Uh, I can't wait to see what the future holds for TM61. They could be one of the tag teams of the year. We'll have to see what happens. Mm-hmm. <sighs> you basically God. took the words out of my mouth, so I don't really have to say anything <laughs> to that. That's, I'm just um, really invested in this team, man. I was before, like, a little bit, not as much as I am now, and these two videos have just made me fall in love with them all over again. But again, the shit, I feel like we need more of this for certain mm-hmm. people. Like, I feel like we're not invested enough in some of these underdog people. Like, before, like the whole Roderick Strong thing, you know, that yeah. got people more invested in them. Obviously, TM61, I didn't really give two fucks about them before this, but now that I know a bit of their story, I've grown, like, a, a newfound respect for them for what they went through, mm-hmm. like, the guy wrestling when he really shouldn't have in that the end of that uh, ma- uh, tag team classic there. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's stuff that's needed sometimes for talent. You know, they should they should be doing these things with, I was just thinking about it, these people that we think they should get called back down to NXT, they should be doing stories like that for them to get them, or even if they want to do those on the main roster, to get more people invested in some people that they want to get over. If they're trying something on the main roster with a mid-carder or something, and they really want people to get behind them and it's not really working out, you need to do stuff like this, I think, yeah, to like get have, people more invested in and learn their backstory. Like, have they done that with Ty Dillinger? On the main roster? Do people get more behind that 10 thing and be uncontrollable. It probably, I'm not saying it'd be bigger than the whole yes thing with Daniel Bryan, but it'd be just as popular. I'm guaranteeing you this right now. If they did something like that with Ty Dillinger, he'd be very over. And he probably, if they did that in NXT, he right, right now he'd probably be getting the next shot for the, the championship or he'd be in consideration. So, yeah, I mean, him and Johnny Gargano were basically on the same level when he was down here before. So, it's just something that needs to be done once in a while, and look what it's doing. It's getting people more invested into people like Roderick Strong and now TM61. So who knows what the next people that are going to get this but, story. Yep. Apparently their debut is next week, so I'm actually excited for that. See what happens. It actually gets people excited for something. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, par- Coming from NXT, we, shocker. Apparently we got something. I'm looking at the results. Apparently Nikki Cross and Lacey Evans will face on the TakeOver ne- uh, also, yeah. which will be basically the kickoff match. Oh, which will be like the taping for NXT okay. next week. Hmm. Interesting. Lacey Evans and Nikki Cross. Interesting. Interesting, man. I don't know if that's going to fugue. It's going to carry over. Or is it just a one-off? To me, it looks like it's just going to be a one-off. And I also saw something interesting on, tw- on uh, Twitter. WWE's NXT page posted fucking Cassius Ono uh, confronted <laughs> Velveteen Dream after that match tonight backstage. So. Oh... And Cash Sono like kind of pushed him, so it looks like Velveteen Dream. I will, I will never have be a bigger Velveteen Dream fan than if he <laughs> just completely vanishes Cash Sono from the NXT world. Man, please make him say your name a hundred times. Get him the fuck off my TV. That'd be great. Oh, keep it up in the chat. That's what we were talking about. That video. They need to do a comeback story for Mike Kanellis that way. That would get so many people invested in Mike Kanellis, and you actually have to keep him in NXT. For that, I think that would be a good way to uh, introduce Mike Canales into back into the WWE. Be a really good idea. Um, but yeah, you cheering for Velveteen Dream? Yep, a girl Nikki or a girl uh, Cuba girl here would probably love that. <laughs> um, so back to NXT, we had the uh, random. I can't. Even, it's not. It didn't even happen to be a match, but AOP came out and they were supposed to face these two jobbers named James. I think his name was James Brown. I heard Devin Davian Smith. I guess I, just ra- I'm random looking names. Role, I'm looking at the raw result or the NXT results. It says versus these guys. These guys. <laughs> I, I I tried to listen for the names just because. Remember that team that? Uh, oh man, I forgot her names they already. Faced, they should have faced Chris Starr and Riley Apex. That's it. Chris, where's Chris Starr and Riley Apex? Why weren't they on the show again this week? We need AOP more of them. Can't, AOP can't be credible unless the, you know they squash Riley Apex and Chris Starr. I mean, right? Those, you need to squash these guys to become anything big in NXT. You can't be legit number one contenders unless you go against Riley Starr and, and Chris A- or Was it Chris or Andy Apex? I can't even remember his fucking name. Riley Apex and Chris Starr. Starr that's it. Starr. Uh, but like the guys they squashed, the, the, I told you, I'm like, God, the literally the one guy was smaller than Ellsworth. Yeah, this guy like, might, belonged in 105 much, Live. At least Riley Apex, I don't even know which one it was. At least he was like a giant dude. These these guys were literally like a hundred pounds. Yeah, like the, guy five the, per, the guy in the purple literally belonged in 105 Live, if there was ever such a thing. But they get randomly like destroyed before the match. What the AOP, fuck? 
doing it? What did this do for AOP? I don't know. They got on the mic and they cut a promo on Undisputed Era. It was like half English, half Samoan, I guess is what they speak. I'm not really sure. Uh, and then they performed their finisher, the Super Collider, on uh, the Jobbers. Paul Overing. <laughs> oh. I thought at least Undisputed Wait. Era would come out on the stage and like taunt them or something. like Just like something to like... You know, like intensify so now, their tag team feud, but I mean. they like, didn't do getting, anything. So they're getting a heel versus heel tag team title match. Yeah, I guess. I know that Undisputed Era is going to get a babyface reaction in Philly, so they'll probably play the half tweener babyface. In Maybe this case. Sanity gets involved in this. I don't know, but we haven't seen them for yeah, a while. Yeah, they might. They might because they're. It was basically Adam Cole and the other two to put them out. And cause them to be out, so maybe maybe they get added to the match like right last minute, then and there. Yeah, could see that, could see that. But uh, but pointless squash match mid- by yeah. AOP. That was stupid. Made yeah. no sense. But what made sense was the main event, which we were all looking forward to, and that was Johnny Wrestling. You can see him wearing the T-shirt if you watched the YouTube video of this one against uh, Velveteen Dream. Uh, winner goes on to take over Philly to face. Andred Cielomas for the NXT Championship. Yeah, idolo. Uh, first of all, Velveteen Dream was wearing Johnny Gargano's T-shirt. Yeah, a rip style T-shirt on the top. Another way to play mind games, I guess. Let's say his name. Um, but the crowd was split right down the middle. My God. And they chanted Johnny Wrestling Velveteen for literally two minutes straight. I think literally more than I think it was literally the first five minutes of this match was the crowd chanting both these guys' names. And I've never seen that done. Like I've seen maybe like a first like thirty seconds of a match, but literally for the first five minutes of this match, they were chanting both these guys' names. And that's you know you're you're making it over in NXT when the crowd is literally not stopping. And it, you know you have a good crowd when they don't stop like that. So I thought that was really well done. Um, we had Gargano attempt a Gargano escape early, which Velveteen Dream really got, got out of quickly. So that was actually a pretty intense moment. Um, he came back later on in the match with a neckbreaker from the rope that looked pretty good by Dream. I mean, he basically caught Gargano in the middle there. Um, basically almost like Randy Orton style. Um, Dream fakes the outside dive at one point. You thought it was a good heel move where he looked like he was going to do like this big spot and then jumps off and goes, no, 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 not for you guys. <laughs> I like that a lot. No, that's good. He's good. He's good at playing the crowd and playing that heel that messes with the crowd and messes with his opponent. Like The, the LV Dream is, is playing a really, really good heel, so I think he's doing a lot of good work with that. Um, it ended up being like a really good back-and-forth match as well. Lots of good spots, lots of near finishes. There was that huge avalanche cartwheel Death Valley driver by Dream that somehow Johnny Gargano kicked out of. I don't know how the fuck he kicked out of that. It was because Velveteen took too long to cover him. Ah, uh, okay, so the whole trying to crawl. Uh, I'm going to reach. Uh, <laughs> got it. One, two. Oh, how do you kick out of that? Um... <laughs> But Gargano set, gets his knees up on the Purple Rainmaker after after he tries that. Um, and it leads into the lock-in of the Gargano escape. And literally just like that, he taps out because they were playing, I guess he's playing off the injured arm from him trying to do an elbow drop on the knees of Johnny Gargano. And yep. then uh, Gargano wins. And he's going to go on to take over Philly for face and face Cien Almas for the NXT Championship. I mean, everybody saw this coming, but it was still a really good match. I a mean, really good match. They gave him a lot of time. Yeah, these two guys got like 20 minutes of match time, which was really good. Mm-hmm. And still, even though Velveteen Dream lost, he's still continuing to build some momentum. And people are really starting to turn heads with this guy as far as what he can do in the ring. Mm-hmm. Because they always say, you know, he's this flamboyant guy outside the ring. But then when the bell rings, he that guy can go. Mm-hmm. Which is great. I like it. Um, See, so it almost ends up coming out to the ring. And uh, they have a stare down with each other. Um he tries to pull a fast one. He hands a title to uh, Selena Vega and tries to punch Johnny Gargano. And then uh, Johnny Gargano reverses it. They start brawling with each other. And he basically throws Johnny Gargano out of the ring and celebrates with the title. Gargano, though, the resilient as he is, is climbing up. He's, he's climbing up the, the, the ropes there. Cien Almas tries to go for to hit him with the title. And he gets the knee or the foot up and kicks Cien Almas in the face. And then it does that. Uh, that slingshot DDT into the ring that looks so good, and it's it, you need someone good to sell it, and almost sold it really, really good here. So they made it look very, very good. 
Um, and then after that, Gargano, uh, he's gonna look. For, he's trying to. He's looking at the title. The crowd's chanting him to grab the title. He grabs it and then poses above Cien Almas with the championship to end the show. So, interesting end of the show. I was saying before, as soon as the match ended, I was t- we were watching the show together. I was telling him like, "Hey, he Almas needs to come out here. They can't just end the show like this." And he did. Uh, I thought it was a really good way to lead into their match at NXT Takeover Philly. So I'm looking so forward to these two going at it uh, this Saturday night. I mean, yeah, we we needed something like that to kind of you know get us invested into the match a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Zelina Vega, like she's just she's perfect for Vel uh, for Velveteen Dream for <laughs> Cien Almas. For my Cien God, Almas, yeah. <laughs> D-R-E-A-M. Yes. And then they even like kicked uh, Gargano out of the ring and then started, you know, posing and shit. And then Gargano comes back with that crazy spot where he does the DDT, you know, from or he jumps off the, I guess you call it a springboard DDT, I guess. Yeah, I don't it's, like know, a, but... it's like a slingshot. I think he called it a slingshot. slingshot yeah. Slingshot DDT. It's crazy, man. Whatever that is. That thing's yeah. amazing. Mm-hmm. And then Gargano holds up the title and. Good, good way good to way. end the show, especially for the go home show before NXT. I think it could, I mean the whole out of the whole show. I think they could have done a little bit better, but uh, I thought they did it what they need to do for Takeover Philly, and I cannot wait for this Saturday. Man, this Saturday's card looks very, very good, and who knows? I like always, it might just beat the <laughs> Royal Rumble out of the water. It might just beat the Dirty Pay Per View the next night, like it's usually been doing. So we'll see what happens, man. You got. Um, you got Gargano versus Almas. You got Alistair Black versus uh, Adam Cole. You have the tag team match. You have the women's match. It just looks like a very, very good card all around. So we'll see what happens That's on Saturday. Sure. You have to yep. tune in for our TakeOver Philly predictions on Friday. So look out for that, guys. Um, so we'll get into that part of the show because I have some stuff to give a list moment <laughs> to. So we're going to get into that part of the show, guys, and that is the list. Of ten. Ten. You know what? You know what happens? You know what's gonna happen? You just made the list. That's right. Welcome to the list of ten, and that's the part of the show where myself and Corporate Cappy have our moment of the week that makes the list, and our moment or superstar of the week that gets a perfect ten rating. And we'll start off as always. <laughs> With my co-host, <laughs> Corbra Cappy. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm just, I'm going, I'm refreshing my memory because I usually have to delete, delete it from my delete, mind. Delete, After every Monday. So I have to go back and look at Raw and just, you know, try to find one of the t- five terrible things that happened and kind of, you know, determine <laughs> from it. I'd say one of the 25 terrible things. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. See, I don't want to steal your moment either, so that that's the other thing. Mm. Well, don't uh, worry. There's a lot of moments that, in case you pick mine, there's always a backup. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just going to pick it then. I know you probably want to rant about it, but... That's okay. Maybe, maybe you could take a break from ranting about this guy for a week, and I'll do it. Uh, that whole showdown to end Raw 25 between Lesnar, Braun Strowman, and fucking Kane... <laughs> What on earth was that? You ended the 25th anniversary of Raw with a five-minute just absolute garbage so-called fight. It actually didn't even last – it lasted like two minutes. Then you had like the legends come down, and I'm thinking like what the hell are like (laughs) Brother Love going to do? Like what possibly is he going to do to break this up? Like you had all these guys come out. Then you had the main roster guys come out. Nobody did anything. It was just such a pointless, thrown-together garbage segment that belonged in, like, the middle of the show. Like, Raw 25 is supposed to end with something memorable. That was not memorable at all. First of all, like you like you were ranting about on the results show, Kane gets taken out by 1F5. We don't see him the rest of the entire segment. And then... <laughs> And literally then, one f five. That was it. Like literally, he took one f five, and you never see. Just rolled, and we just he like disappeared. He went underneath the ring, and he went back to hell or whatever the hell he wants to call. Yeah. You know, he's so gone. We're supposed to take Kane credible going into this match. Oh, wow. So yeah, then then it leads to the whole Brock Lesnar doing the or Braun Strowman doing the running power slam to Brock in the announce table, and the table didn't even break properly, so it just looked so bad. 
the whole segment was just terribly put together. It didn't get – if anything, it, it made me care less, if that was possible, about the Universal title match going into it this Sunday. And it was just a disgrace for ending Raw 25 with, with that kind of segment. So for that – You know what? You just made the list. That's right. It makes I'm looking the list. At, I'm looking at Bleacher Report, and they actually give ratings on every segment. Really? They gave that a C. I'm like, that's generous. A C that's like that. F. That's like F. I, I, I literally like like Michael. Why the F is Kane in the match? Literally, he's yeah. literally just there to take the pin. That's he's gonna take one F five, roll out of the ring. It's gonna be Braun and Brock destroying each other around the whole ring, you know, breaking shit. And then Kane's gonna roll back in the ring, try to attempt a choke slam. It's gonna get reversed, and he's gonna take the pin. I'm telling you, that's exactly how the match is gonna go. You heard it from my word, from my mouth. That's exactly how the match is gonna go. <laughs> they gave the. They gave a DX reunion only. A, they gave it a D. How was that worse than the fucking Kane segment? I don't know. So uh, my list moment. I'm gonna give first before I give it. A, I'm gonna give an honorable mention. And <laughs> you're gonna be shocked that it's not actually my moment. An honorable mention to uh, their production of Raw at the Manhattan Center this week. So I guess the honorable mention of making the list because my God, I feel so bad for the people that paid that much money. Um, to be there. And like you told me earlier today, um, on, you said on Taz's podcast, he said that they should have labeled it as a viewing party and not an actual episode of Raw at the Manhattan Center. And people would have debated on paying that kind of money to be there because literally all they got was five minutes of Undertaker, five minutes of Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt, and 17 minutes of DX. Other than that, that's literally like 21% of the entire three hours of Raw 25 we got uh, th- this Monday. They got twenty one percent of it, and they paid like almost eight hundred dollars to a thousand to be there. If they would have labeled it something differently, they could have got away with you know saying, "Well, you you should have expected that." If mm-hmm. as a viewing party, then people would have been like, "Okay," they would have been more accepting of it. But no, you label it as literally Monday Night Raw from the Manhattan Center. People were and watching on the TV people, screen. You got these more people than that are drinking it. the Kool Aid, and they're like, "Oh, you know, it's just nostalgia." You know what? Why are you complaining about it? Because it was horrible. It was it was bad. It was terrible. I would have been I pissed wanted to, be to go there. into it. You think I wanted to go into that? And want it to be bad? I wanted it to be good. We were excited about. It. We thought it was going to mm. be a good episode. It just wasn't. No. So I'll give the honorable mentions there. My last moment actually this week, and it it sucks. <laughs> it's been like this for a while, but I'm giving it to SmackDown in general this week. Like it was literally boring. SmackDown did absolutely nothing for me yesterday. I, saw, I after watching SmackDown yesterday, I'm like, okay, this is the go home show for the Royal Rumble, but you you did nothing to get me pumped for the Royal Rumble. Raw did like kind of a mini thing with Oscar, but like what did what did SmackDown do this week to get you pumped up for the Royal Rumble besides their main story of the whole WWE title picture? Which again, it, it really it doesn't make any sense to me because. You have AJ Styles as your WWE champion. He's basically taking... He's like the side note. They're basically mainly focusing on Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. And it, it's like he's a he's a playing factor. He's supposed to be the main thing here. Uh, to me, it just doesn't feel right. that there was, The show is just lackluster. We had an okay one-on-one match between Gable and Uso. But I'm like, it's not getting me pumped up for their two out of three falls match. You did nothing with the women. I don't know what the fuck that whole woman's thing was this week on SmackDown. <laughs> And then Charlotte coming out, I'm like, okay, cool. Like they, they, they left you with like, how am I supposed to get pumped for the first ever women's Royal Rumble after this either? SmackDown is after Raw. It's supposed to make you even more pumped for the Royal Rumble, and it literally did nothing to get me pumped for the Royal Rumble. So SmackDown this week was extremely lazy, man. Like it was just as bad as Raw 25 this week, if not worse, I think. So for SmackDown being very lazy this week and not doing anything to get me pumped for the Royal Rumble. You know what? You just made the list. It makes a list. I'm sorry. It has to make the list. Well, the thing is, like, it's it felt like a, a go-home show for, like, a minor pay-per-view. Like a, I don't know, like a roadblock or some shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, it's the Royal Rumble, and there was, like, no, like, signs of it. You, If you watched this without knowing the Rumble was this Sunday, you would have no idea. Because there exactly. wasn't any mention of, you know, uh, this guy's qualifying for the Rumble or, you know... There's like an over the top rope mini challenge thing, or yeah. you know, like there's nothing to get me excited about the Royal Rumble at all. And I'm sorry, you call me a mark, call me whatever you want, but I'm literally with those people who are conspiracizers who think that this is literally Vince McMahon shitting on SmackDown and not trying to make it better than Raw, and that's why SmackDown has been bad for like almost a year since it actually it's been almost a year since it actually remember used to be good. 
SmackDown actually used to be decent. It used to be almost beating Raw on a weekly basis. But ever since then, it's just been literally coasting at mediocre and below Raw. I literally think it's Vince McMahon doing it on purpose to make sure that SmackDown doesn't go above his flag show of Raw. It always has to stay below. And that's why we get lazy booking out of SmackDown. We don't get the proper things. Like It still has the better wrestlers, but we still get nothing out of it. We're always left with wanting wanting more. And you... you you can't be left with wanting more. You gotta be. It's like you gotta be left off with what you get an hour out of NXT. Like we get better things out of an hour of NXT when we get on a full two hours of SmackDown. So, to me, they can do a really better job. And I honestly, I agree with those people who think it's Vince McMahon in the end. And I'm, I'm agreeing with them. You can call them whatever you want. I'm going with those people, and I think it's true. You can't sit there and think he's not crazy because he's fucking senile, and I believe it. You get those the the worst commercial breaks at the worst times. Exactly. Then you get like a two minute match afterwards. Just doesn't it doesn't know. it's it's to me it's like again like what's like, what exactly Mike show? I think Vince sabotages SmackDown Live on purpose almost to make sure that his flagship show stays above SmackDown. That's just me. You guys can think what you want out there. I'm gonna agree with those people who actually think it's Vince it's Vince McMahon because he the guy is literally like cuckoos. So um, let's get into the, the the perfect ten moments this week. Who's your perfect ten moment this week? <sighs> And I know it's hard because the main roster gave you literally nothing this week, but I mean, there's one obvious one, and I'll let you take it if you want to take it. Mm, no, I, I, Raw doesn't deserve it, honestly. Not even Raw the doesn't. No, Raw doesn't deserve a ten moment for me. Wow, you heard no, it here it first. Was, it was that bad. Like, yeah, the Stone Cold thing was awesome, but like the rest of the show was just unacceptable. I don't blame it was you. just so lazy. Um, ten moment this week. Uh, can I give it to the Jinder Mahal coming out? I mean, you can always give two list moments. It's up to you. I mean, yeah, like NXT really didn't like the the Gargano and Velveteen Dream match was really good. I really liked that match. But to me, this episode of NXT, I think Cupid Girl said it earlier, it was basically just a hype show for mm-hmm. NXT Takeover. So yeah, I'm gonna give a second list moment this week because right. main roster deserved it. <laughs> uh, pff, fuck. There's too many things to choose from. I know. <laughs> you know. Why don't you go ahead with your ten moment, and then I'll uh, I'll finish off with my second list. Um. Okay. So my ten moment. I'm gonna pick it because I, to me it it was awesome and did what it needed to do to start the show. But after that, it was just downhill from there. Literally like down, 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 downhill. So the beginning of Raw. I'm giving my ten moment to because that was awesome. That was literally. Everything we could have asked for in an anniversary show and how you should start it, it not going to make up for what we got for two and a half hours after that. But we, I love the opening. We started off with the, the Shane and Steph um, introducing Vince McMahon. Vince McMahon getting – it's awesome when people were saying on Twitter that Vince McMahon gets that reaction. Meanwhile, these are the same people that rip him apart for his creative decisions. And I think it's just out of respect they cheer him like that. You know what I mean? Like you still got to respect the guy even though his creative decisions are literally loopy. Um, you still got to respect the guy and what he's done for it. Like it, without Vince McMahon, we wouldn't be here talking about this today. So um, – I thought that was cool, and then they got the, the whole funny thing with the plaque and them mentioning the GoFundMe account not raising enough. I thought that was freaking hilarious, and then Vince McMahon turning heel like on a dime, which was fucking amazing, and then that led into Stone Cold coming out. just brings you back to those days in the attitude there when shit was actually watchable, and he had the, the whole Stone Cold thing. He didn't even say a word. He just came and stunnered Shane. <laughs> the whole thing when he was saying, like, Shane's in his prime. I'm a senior citizen. I got the RA, or is it a... ARSP or whatever it's called. AARP card. AARP card. <laughs> and then he stuns Shane, and they they, uh, they share a beer of him and Vince for all time's sake, and Vince gets stunned. The only way Vince knows how to get stunned. Shane ends up getting another stunner to relive that scene where he used to spit the beer out in the air before, so he did the same thing. I thought it was just cool. It was a good nostalgia moment, and I thought it was a good way to kick off the show, but again, it made... Mm, Everything else for the rest of the show, terrible. So for that beginning of the show, so the first 25 minutes, pun intended, for Raw 25, it gets a perfect 10. That's right. So that's what I gave it. Oh, I got something. I got something. (laughs) Oh, you got something. Uh, I got like 10 things I could choose from, but I'm going to go. I love Michael Chow's in the chat. What? Michael, the second list moment, the reoccurring APA scene 
with random ass stars that stretched through th- throughout the entire show. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I, I give an honorable mention to that because <laughs> that was bad. Oh yeah. Okay, I got my ten moment this week. Uh, oh, you got a ten? List. Yes, oh. I, fa- I I remembered something that I really liked. Okay. And there was just too. I could rant for days about how bad that Raw twenty five was, but you can go back and watch our Raw results for that because. We ranted for about an hour about that. So my 10 moment this week is going to um, – I think there was two big endorsements this week on Raw. Oh, yes. That's right. I think, like Koopa Girl just said in the chat, Elias looking really good against John Cena. I thought that was very well done. Yep. Um, especially because, you know, Elias – everybody knows it was supposed to be Cena and Joe, and then Joe got hurt. So now it's Elias. But Elias looking strong going into that against Cena, really well done, and it really elevates – Elias to that next level, I think, with a feud with John Cena. So I really like that. And I really like the endorsement of the Balor Club by DX. I really think that Bal- there's going to be huge things in store for Balor Club. And that's why if you you know listen to my How to Book, I'm picking Finn Balor to win the Royal Rumble. Um, I really think that they need to do something with the club's momentum right now. Be putting them back together. Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson, maybe they get a tag team title shot eventually down the road. But especially Finn Balor. That guy... Deserves to go back up to the top where he never really should have left to begin with, but because of that injury, he had to force, he was forced to leave. Um, but I really liked the kind of the, the old click passing it on to the new click. I thought it was really well done, and Triple H holding Balor's hand at the end of the show, like to me, that symbolizes something. That symbolizes like this is going to be the guy, mm-hmm. and I think I think we'll look back at that moment one day and be like, yep, that's where it started. So, for the endorsement by DX and. Um, Triple H to the Balor Club this week. That gets my perfect ten. That's right, perfect ten. So and I, there was, just, there I, was I love that. Garbage <laughs> yeah, this week I, to talk about. I really love that endorsement, man. That was really good. So. I, I really, I was debating the bull Bray Wyatt and Woken Matt Hardy garbage match oh, we got. God. But that was yeah. That was apparently it's not over. Apparently there's more fights in this great war. Yes. So that just like derailed it for me for Matt Hardy. Like why oh, did he man. have to take a loss to the to the eater of elves of all people? They could have put something else at that uh, at that event, man. There was so much they could have done instead of that at the Manhattan Center. Again, I'm another thing where I feel bad um, for the. Uh, I'm sorry for the. Uh, the people at the Manhattan Center. I was going to call it the Barclay Center for a second. But, uh, yeah, um, God, just I, – I, again, I think it's derailing me too. I, I want to get more invested in this, but we're not really getting a lot out of it. So we'll see what happens. Um, let's get into your tweets out there. I actually sent out a thing. We got some tweets while we were on the air. So let me just pull them up here while we wait. Um Okie dokie. Here they are, I think. Uh, God, where is it? Ah, got them. All right. So, we'll start off with your tweets out there with Cubagirl125 on Twitter. She puts, where do you see No Way Jose going from here? Just a thought, but I really want him to feud with the Velveteen Dream. Well... Because of what we got after NXT today, we didn't see it. But it looks like Valentine Dream is going to feel with Cassius Ono. No way, Jose. I don't know. I really hope he doesn't get fed to Lars Sullivan. I hope they continue this thing with Sullivan and uh, uh, Killian Dane. And uh, who, there was someone else. Roderick Strong to call them out? Was yeah. Roddy Strong? I don't know. They didn't really continue with it this week. Hopefully it leads to something. But uh, who knows what, what No way, Jose goes against, man. It's, it's, it's interesting because really there's – you look at it from the outside. I don't know where he feuds with next. I guess we got to wait till after takeover. We'll have to see. Uh, I hope it's something. He's still kind of over with the crowd, so I don't think he should be left in the dark. Um, also, since Nikki is going to be up against Lacey Evans next week, do you think this might be her last match? I really hope not. Because it would make sense for Sanity to move up already since Lars called out Killian. Hmm. Do we think that this will be Nikki Cross's last match before getting called up? Do you think she gets split from Sanity, though? I don't. It's... No, I, I don't think. Don't... I don't think it's right. Re- I don't think it's their time yet. Not yet. Yeah, I still think it should be waiting for that. Like maybe later down, like maybe around Takeover Brooklyn, t- maybe time. 
we'll have to wait for them. But I think Sanity is too good right now to split up. Um, and but I do think Nikki Cross is going to get a showcase this Sunday in the Women's Royal Rumble. I think that's a perfect opportunity to kind of bring her up mm-hmm. for people to kind of see what she's like. Just like Ty Dillinger that's when we yep. first saw him before him getting called up. So I think they're going to do the same thing. Uh, finally, do you think Bianca Belair should be the number one contender after Shayna? I really think she can beat Shayna Baszler. Bianca no. Belair. It's a little it's too early. early to say no. that. A little no, early no, to no, say no. that. <laughs> let's 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 uh, take a few steps back here. All right, let's go. <laughs> let's let these talents build a little bit. All right, but Bianca Belair, she's gonna get there. But NXT title shot, not yet. Yeah, not, not even yet. close. <laughs> we'll have to no. wait. Uh, maybe one on one feud without a title if Shayna doesn't end up winning it. Who knows? But uh, Shayna just looks let, like she's got to be in the title scene. You got to let these talents grow a little bit before you give them instant title shots. Yeah. Um, on to Michael Chow, our former fan of the year uh, for 2016. Uh, no, 2017. No, 2016. I was right. Anyways, show was good, but felt there was too many jobber matches when they could have used time to build their takeover matches. I agree with that. Uh, like Lars Sullivan challenging Killian Dane and Roderick Strong, uh, cha- and, La- and Roderick Strong challenging Lars Sullivan. They could have used the jobber time to address this. Okay, I do agree with that. Um, that Death Valley bomber from the top row, Mama Maria. <laughs> I <laughs> seriously. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love doing the Mama Mia thing. <laughs> I seriously thought Dream had it after that move. Dream has officially arrived. This guy keeps getting better and better. Put this guy in the rumble, and he's got a gift of the Velveteen Dream making his entrance. Mm-hmm. Yes, the, the the AOP squash thing literally made no sense to me. That was completely unneeded. Mm-hmm. Uh, just, <laughs> but yes, they, they should have been building the secondary feuds if they weren't really going to do anything with the main feuds for the takeover. Like we could have, we could have gotten another Tito and Riddick Moss against the. Oh yeah, your boy Tito. Thing. Yeah, where are they at? <laughs> we could have got, you know, maybe uh, some sort of comeback for the Street Profits after getting buried by AOP last week. Yeah, that maybe sucks. they could have came back and got us got a win against somebody. You know, they could have built the secondary feuds going into after Takeover because mm-hmm. since they're not really going to have any matches at Takeover, but. Like they could have done something. There's a lot of stuff they could have done without. I, I agree with the whole uh, addressing, like why why killing or why Lars Sullivan called out Killing Dane, and then Roderick Strong called out Lars Sullivan. They really have like since then they've like it's like they left us in the dark about that. They could have some addressed something with that this week. Not, none of the three guys have addressed any of the callouts at all, mm-hmm. which is weird. I don't know what the hell's going on there. Uh, Michael Chow has a question. Do you think anyone at that Shayna Baszler attacked Zane, Dakota Kai, or Leah will get involved in the takeover match? Or Ronda Rousey assist Shayna to win the title to start setting up the four horsewomen storyline? Wow, would that be an mm. out of the blue thing? No, because if Ronda Rousey is going to be in the Royal Rumble, they want it to be a surprise. Yeah, I think so. Well, they. Maybe they she she does she shows up at Takeover maybe to swerve everyone to think oh maybe they're gonna book her in NXT instead of the Royal Rumble. I can kind of see that. That's kind of an interesting thought. But uh, what was the other part of his question? Um, do you think that the some of the people that attacked or that that Shane Baszler attacked come back and try to help or try to attack Baszler during the match? Uh, Dakota Kai, Kari Zayn, or uh, Aaliyah. I don't see it. I think they really want to keep. They want to keep it Ember Moon and Shayna Baszler focused. The the uh, sorry, I keep forgetting name. Ronda Rousey thing is interesting. It is an interesting thought. But Aaliyah and Dakota Kai just aren't relevant at all to even mm-hmm. be in that match at all. So mm-hmm. I want it to be one on one. Just you know, straight up. I would too. I, I really want to see what these two can go. I mean, we need to see what the future of this division has, and I think we need to keep it fresh. We need to keep it clean. We need to see what these girls can do one on one with each other to, to really put a grasp on it. So, oh, you don't want to see some old person come back and be a, make it a triple. Threat we see so enough that of that. The pin. Uh, we see enough of that. <laughs> like God. with uh, your boy Kane in there being yeah. put in a triple threat, not needed. <laughs> Anyways, uh, time for the last two tweets, and that comes from our 2017 Fan of the Year and Hit, his entrance music. That's 
right. It goes to glorious Greg and his glorious entrance theme song that he got to choose because he won our 2017 fan of the year and if you guys out there want to win you our 2018 fan of the year all you have to do is chat with us live in the chat here or tweet at us and get involved on twitter and you're automatically eligible to win our 2018 fan of the year and then you will uh get also cho- uh, chosen for picking your own theme song before we read any of your tweets and we're also doing twitter fans of the month which we'll be announcing at the end of this month, so you don't want to miss out on that. You get a shout-out right here on the show because of that. So getting into glorious Greg's tweets about NXT tonight, he writes, I love Johnny Gargano, and so do I. Obviously, if you're watching this YouTube version of the show, you see I'm wearing the Johnny Wrestling t-shirt. He also puts, also, I'm excited about Bianca Belair. I think she will bring something to the women's division in NXT. So... Thank you for your tweets, Glorious Greg. As always, guys, that's all you have to do. You can do simple tweets like that. That's all you We just want to hear your thoughts out there and know what you guys are thinking about NXT. And if you have any questions to ask us and what we think about it, let us know on Twitter. And the holds bar, WP is where you can do that. So thank you, Glorious Greg, as always. And thank you for that uh, rendition of picking that theme song. Uh, Bobby Roode, it's a remix, a guitar remix that I found. So. Oh my god. Can we quickly talk about how bad that mix match challenge thing was? Oh man, yeah. This week was uh it was uh Miz and Asuka versus Carmella and Big E. Asuka spelt like Oscar. Asuka. Yeah. Oh my and god. It's is, just it's New too... Day dressed in Carmella singlets was probably yep. the most disturbing picture I've ever seen in my life. And uh I th- I'm watching it. And I'm going, man. This is literally like watching Saturday Morning Slam. This is just like the complete, the whole giant cringe. L thing, and then Oscar ripping the giant L. Like, it's what the fuck am I watching right now? Literally, I was just not interested at all. I just wasn't. That's not something I can get behind. I just I can't. And again, it doesn't help that we can't even watch it on an actual legit platform. We have to go and try to watch shitty streams, or I got to wait two days later to see it on the network up here mm-hmm. in Canada. Mm-hmm. But to me, it's just been a disappointment so far. Yeah. But that's the Go Home Show for NXT. That is our thoughts on the Raw 25. You can go check that out. We have the Raw review for that. Our thoughts on the Mayon Cla- or Mayon Classic. Mix Max Challenge. Um, and we have the NXT TakeOver Philly uh, predictions coming this Friday. Don't know if we're going to do Royal Rumble predictions or not. We'll let you guys know if we do something like that. Um, but uh, I think that's going to wrap it up unless you have anything to add. Not really, no. Nope. So, guys, that's going to wrap it up for episode 87. Yes, we are already at episode 87 of the Lowdown Show right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, your Canadian wrestling podcast that talks about NXT and WWE and No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. You can follow the podcast again on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP. Follow myself at Real Kyle Masters. You can follow my co-host at Cobra Cappy on Twitter as well. You can also follow us on Instagram, No Holds Bar WP, all one words. We can find us on there. Go uh, follow that if you're into that sort of Instagram thing. You want to listen to us on the go? Stitcher, Radio, iTunes, and Spreaker is where you can find us. Spreaker is a glorious podcast app that's available for all Android and Apple devices. So go download that. You can chat with us live on the air and listen to all previous episodes of the podcast. If you want to watch the video version of this podcast, we are available on YouTube, youtube.com slash NHBWR. Uh, we would like if you go and hit that subscribe button, that bell icon for all upload updates. You can see 2K content on there, unboxings, and other video versions of the podcast are all located on there as well. Guys, I'm your self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, as always. And I'm always joined by my co-host. He is the blissful boss, Mr. Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. Asa. Asa. We're always reminding you to keep it on the lowdown. Gonna kick your soul, yes, out on the street. <laughs> <laughs> what you got? Listen, if you own the street, we're back to-